around the world and here at home, bringing relief, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. You're listening to the Mize Missions Podcast with Terry Mize. Hello, everybody. God bless you, and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries Podcast. As always, Terry and I are just thrilled that you have taken the time to join us, and we have prayed and believed God today that uh, God will have us say something by the Holy Ghost, with or without (laughs) our acknowledgement of it, or deliberately, or just off the cuff. You know, the Holy Spirit always has a way to minister to hungry hearts, and if you're hungry, and you want something that from the Lord, pull on us today with your faith. And believe, God, that what we have to share over the next few minutes with you will be something that will edify you, it'll comfort you, it'll challenge you, it'll give you a fresh vision, it'll open your eyes to see something in the realm of the Spirit that you've never seen before, that you've never been able to enjoy the truth of, much less ever put it into action. So that's why we're here today. Just remember, you can find us at terrymize.com, terrymizeministries.org as well. And then all of our resources are there for you, all of our products, our travel schedule, contact information. Leave a prayer request. Let us pray with you and agree with you. You know, we just do that so many times uh, during the week on behalf of other people, and we pray for you partners every single day. So, darling, let's just minister to the folks today and believe, God, that we're going to speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Well, amen. You know, we're... uh Actually, up on the northeast coast, or north <laughs> central right. coast, I guess. That's We're right. in Washington, D.C. this week, or just just barely outside the Beltway into uh, the state of Maryland. That's right. And uh, we had tremendous services this weekend with uh, uh, our dear friends, uh, Apostle and Dr. Michael Freeman and his lovely wife, Dr. Dee Dee. And uh, they're at Spirit of Faith Church, and they've got three campuses. And so That's we right. ministered at one campus on Saturday night. And then we ministered at two campuses on on Sunday, Sunday morning, that's and right. it was their international weekend or their missions weekend. And they had invited missions, me and asked me to come and talk to them about missions, teach them about missions, and and it was just so uh, gratifying to see everybody hungry for the Word of that's God right. and excited. And all three campuses, all three great churches, our locations, <laughs> right. and and uh, Michael got up and actually told the people. He said, you know. He said, um, uh, I met Terry back in the 90s, and he said, uh, hearing him preach on missions literally changed my life. And he said, and Dr. Frederick K.C. Price is my spiritual father, and he said, I know it's, it absolutely changed his life. And, of course, uh, Fred, being a dear friend of mine, Fred Price has told me that numbers of times that hearing me preach on missions literally, start, literally stirred a fire on That's the inside right. of him and That's changed his said. life and changed the way he, he does things. That's right. and, and he said that publicly many times, or I wouldn't tell it, you know, if he hadn't made it public, uh, but he said that publicly many times. And so it's uh, Michael wanted me to come and minister and, and do the same thing at his That's churches right. that That's right. have been accomplished there at, at Crenshaw in California. And, of course, Michael, uh, uh, after uh, Fred appointed Michael as the administrator or the president of of his ministerial organization called Fick Wiffem. Um And then uh, they've actually, uh, this coming October, I mean, here we are in March, but in October he's going to have a big announcement uh, about uh, how to blend uh, that organization and ministry into right. another uh, just organization. Just take things to that, another yeah, level. Yeah, just take it to another level. Take to another organization level. Organization he already has. That's right. And, of course, we're delighted to be with them in on that and, and, and excited about that. But, you know, just it's always a delight to me to preach missions and share missions and That's tell right. people things about missions. And, and even though they want me to speak preach the same sermon a Saturday night and both services Sunday at all three campuses, I, mm-hmm. I use the same format or the same seven right. points right. but I did it different in each place and well, so yes, you did. you'd almost have to get a CD of each one of them, each one of them uh, put to it put together. it all together to make right. it happen because I right. gave I kind of fleshed out the seven points I gave I gave them seven Bible principles on world missions which God spoke to me and gave me way back uh, way back in the 70s right. and that was the message that Fred Price heard me preach in 1979 in Will Rogers uh, Coliseum in Fort Worth Texas uh, that I preached on missions, and he came up to me and said, Terry, you've stirred a fire down the inside of me and uh, changed my whole everything about missions. And, of course, he became partners with us, both the church, Crenshaw, and uh, he and Betty personally a partner with That's us right. on a monthly basis. That's right. 
And, uh, and of course, Michael and Dee have committed to, to do the same thing, to partner with us on a monthly basis out of their, uh, out of their ministry. And so, uh, but those seven points that God gave me were a rhema word to me, just gave them to me. Right. And I preached it, and, uh, and here all these many years later, I'm still preaching that same message because, you know, most missionaries come and they show uh, slides of kids with bloated bellies and flies on their face, and they're hungry right. and they're sick. Then they're and, and then Americans <laughs> feel guilty and give. And I've just never been of that camp of that school and i just said i refuse to make people feel guilty i'm just going to preach from the word of god now now no doubt those pictures are true no doubt there are sure, hungry sure. kids around the world and Absolutely. no doubt there are flies on the face and bloated right. bellies well, that's all that. true I've, yeah. I've seen that time right, and time right. and time again but i don't try to use that to guilt trip shame christians right. into giving to missions i try to give them the word of god right. an anointed message on the word of god that you ought to give to missions you are responsible for missions god you can't opt out of missions and say i'm just not going to play no god God commanded you. Jesus no, commanded right. you get the gospel that's to the world. Right. So right. it's not a choice that Christians have. We don't have a choice about it. Uh, we just have to be smart about it and hear from the Holy Ghost. And so, so I thoroughly enjoyed ministering this weekend. And and of course, we were in uh, Miami last week. And it was nice <laughs> and toasty. And and yeah. uh, this week we're sitting in our hotel room with uh, a nor'easter coming in. Yeah, that's right. And they're right. they're predicting some pretty serious snow amounts. Yeah. I don't know if it'll happen or not because weathermen don't always get it right. But uh, they're talking about in some places, you know, uh, eight to twelve inches of snow, that's and other right. places one to two inches of snow. And and uh, we're sitting right on the Potomac River, our, yeah. our hotel is, and, and all day today it's been hazy and foggy looking out across the Potomac trying to see the other yeah, side. Yeah, it has definitely and, deteriorated. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's definitely deteriorated, and so they're, they're forecasting a big nor'easter coming in sure uh, tomorrow, look like which, is not what I, which is not what I was expecting <laughs> or wanting because you, my darling, have told me for the last three years that we've been married, you said, yeah. you said I would love to go to Washington, D.C., because we come up here every year in November anyway right. for a, meeting, November, a meeting that Brother, Brother Copeland does. Meeting, yeah. And you've said, I'd love to come to Washington, D.C. In the, in the springtime and see the cherry blossoms. Well, I hadn't so seen them Michael, since I was four years old. Well, when, and when so Michael and, when Michael and Dee Dee invited us to come in March, I thought, well, uh, praise the Lord. Renee's going to get to see the... The cherry blossoms, well, and so we'll go up there and and uh, preach for them, and yeah. then and then see some cherry blossoms, and we'll all live happily ever after. But uh, we weren't counting on a nor'easter and a bunch <laughs> of snow, and the cherry blossoms all got their their arms and legs crossed trying to stay warm. Right. And right. Uh, but, but I'm believing we'll get to see some before we get out of here. I do too. You, we've just. I was just sitting here laughing today. I said to Terry, I said, "Well, you know, we're still looking at water like we were in Miami. It's just not the Atlantic Ocean well, that's true. in Miami, and there's." This is the Potomac, and it, yeah, but just a few miles down the river is the Atlantic. <laughs> is the Atlantic, but it was you know the contrast in life, and that that's pretty much you know one one week you're you're in beautiful sun shining beaches, and the next week you're in a blizzard, and it, well, I you heard, know we're on the same highway. I mean, yesterday we were driving on US one, <laughs> right, and, and that we were goes, driving on I ninety five, and in Miami we were driving on US one and I ninety five. I heard Brother Hagen say uh, decades ago, he said, you know, I've learned in life that I can just be up on the mountain shouting one day. And he said that the next day, he said, my head can be down where my feet were. And I said, you know, that, that's so much like what life is, that we literally um, can be just soaring along through life. And uh, we certainly don't always know what's going on in the realm of the spirit. Um, well, I know that God has a plan for us, and it's always good. Oh, absolutely. But then Satan has a plan for us, and then our ignorance plays into what's going on as we're growing and maturing in the things of the Lord. And it just takes so much, you know, for, for us to really, I, I don't mean that from a negative standpoint, but it, it does require that we stay alert. Oh, absolutely. And we stay full of the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. And we stay... It really focused on holding well, and the stay hand with in, the Lord. In spiritual authority, in That's dominion, right. like God put That's us. Right. That's we can't right. just sleep and, and, and think it's going to be okay. It's Right. Uh, but, you know, uh, Renee, uh, all three of those services we did this weekend are on our Facebook page. Yes, they are. Uh, Isn't that wonderful? Uh, the Terry we Mize Ministries. That. The Terry right. Mize Ministries Facebook page. That's right. The church here just put it directly on there, and I didn't know they were going to do it. So we you could actually go that. to uh, Terry Mize Ministries' Facebook page and uh, hear all three messages, which all three messages were on the seven Bible principles of world missions, but some I told testimonies, and some I told testimonies about raising the dead, and some I didn't tell any testimonies at all. So you can you can get all three of those messages, put them together, and have you a bang-up time. No, that's right, and, and we were so grateful that they did that for us because it let people be able to hear you. Oh, absolutely. If you are interested 
In hearing more about this or purchasing it for your pastor, please call our office because Terry has a wonderful series on this, and it's called Missions, The Purpose of Faith. And we would really like for you to, to hear that and realize that the generation that you live in is requiring that we stay focused on winning God a bigger family. Oh, absolutely. Winning our souls. job is to That's win our the job. lost. That's Jesus our job. Jesus died to win the sinner. You know, I've said many years, Jesus never died for a Christian. No, that's Jesus <laughs> died for sinners. For sinners. And uh, we Christians now can't just sit back on our laurels and just fellowship with Christians and just... Uh, participate with Christians and just go to church and stay with Christians all the time. We right. have got to win sinners. We've got to win the lost. If we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, if we're going That's to vindicate right. the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, if we're going to make his death worth something, right. we have right. got to continue to win the lost. Because every time a, a person, right, every time a person goes to hell, and it happens every day, every time a person goes to hell, Jesus' blood didn't do anything for that person. No, Jesus' blood right. was worthless for that person. That's they didn't accept horrible. the blood. They didn't horrible. accept the salvation. They didn't accept the name That's of right. Jesus. That's and right. so they didn't get saved, so they went to hell. And and most, most much of that is because a Christian didn't interrupt them and tell them about Jesus. No, that's right. That's right. The, the statistic is that the longer you're a Christian, the fewer uh, unsaved friends that you have. And so you just by being in church, being around more Christians, you begin to pull away from having any influence in the world. And, and Christians statistically start treating their life as like they're going to just stay around their club members right, all the time right, right. instead of yeah. going to the world. It becomes God bless me and my wife, yeah. you and your wife, us four no more, you know. And as Christians, we can become very, very religious and isolated from the reality of everyday life of people going to hell. Hudson Taylor said in the 1850s when he was going to China that the, the, the uh, ratio in China was a million Chinese died every day. Every day. Every single day. And he said he could not rest in the comfort of an, a European lifestyle and not do something about it. And it was just an amazing thing to him that he just dedicated himself to going oh, to China for all those years. And that's what's happening. People are dying and going to hell. And here we sit in America, an opulent, abundant Christianity with books and CDs and bumper stickers and billboards, and that's Christian television, Christian radio, local churches, all these things with us. And we're trying to isolate ourselves to where our little, our little teeny tiny pinhead of a life is perfect and nothing bad ever comes into it. <laughs> and, and everybody pray for me and, and, and don't anybody hurt my feelings and don't offend me and all of this stuff. And yet the world's going to and hell. And the world's dying and going to hell. And I think we have had such a fragile and intim easily intim intimidated offendable bunch of christians on this planet that that there's a lot of blood on our hands for not doing something more than we should well for the we've kingdom. certainly got blood on our hands and america has blood on her hands now america's done a good job right. over his, over history and sending missionaries to exactly. the mission fields they, exactly historically america has sent 76 percent of the world's missionaries Isn't that to the nations yes but yes. of course we killed over a million babies a year in abortion too That's right. so you know That's I mean, right. we've got some blood on our hands yeah to balance all that out i, I was i was saying about how um uh, Pastor Michael Freeman and Dee Dee just set aside a, a whole weekend of emphasis in their churches and, Thank God and for campuses. A pastor like that. Yes, and it makes a difference. Terry makes this statement um, that it, it makes a difference where you go to church. Sure. That if Absolutely. There, you're, you always say I that. I always say if there wasn't a devil, right. it wouldn't make any difference where you go to church. Exactly. <laughs> You can just go to the big church, the nice that. church, That's so the, important. the fun church, the church with the smoke machine, the church with the <laughs> children's programs and the singles programs and the all right. other kind of programs and horseback rides and camel. I don't care what you do. You can just go anywhere. But there is a devil, and you've got to go to a church that teaches you the Word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the the, the covenant of, uh, of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, healing miracles, run the devil off, spiritual authority, right. uh, kick the devil out in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, uh, That's Sunday, so Sunday, That's right. Pastor Michael stood up and made a declaration over the people, and of course the 
church we were in last uh, week in Miami, you know, Jerry Moore stood up and made a yes. declaration over the people. And almost every church we preach in, pastor will stand up and make some powerful declaration That's exactly over right. the people. Thank God. And, uh, and I say oftentimes, I say, you know, the, the pastor down the street didn't say that over his people today. Oh, that's right. You know, I'd, I'd go to the church that does that. I wouldn't go to the yeah. church that just, just that didn't do that. meets yeah. and claps and takes up an offering and has a few... Three yeah. points in a poem and a joke or two and goes home. Uh, I want a pastor that will declare over me and right. and fight the devil for me and fight hell for my kids. And, and that's what we're looking for today. It's what you got to have today. So thank God for pastors that do that's that. That's right. And, well, Jeremiah, uh, isn't it Jeremiah chapter 3 that says that the the Lord will in the final time give you pastors after his own after heart? After his own heart. His own heart. And I want to encourage all of you today to to pray for your pastors and pray for leadership, that they'll be bold, be loud, be strong in the things of God and not back down and not be intimidated. You know, Ezekiel said there that the Lord told him, don't be intimidated by the faces of the people for they are a stiff necked. <laughs> he said, they are a hard hearted and stiff necked group of people. He said, do not be intimidated by their faces, but no, be right. bold and speak the word of God. God. And I just want to encourage you as Christians today, whoever you are listening, be bold, be strong, teach your people how to pray. You be a prayer because prayer is really what runs the church. Pray for me. Yes. And I, I, I was going to say some of that to you, but I wanted to just skim a, my, my sister-in-law, my first husband's sister, uh, Christy, was put a put up a testimony just a short little like a basically like two paragraphs of a testimony uh years ago in in 1972 that their daughter jennifer my little niece our oldest niece on on dean's side of the family um had had uh gotten into her mother's medicine cabinet while she, christy was in the other room and taken a whole bottle of pills and she was just a little bitty thing i'm trying to think maybe about two years old um and i was three something like that and they didn't you know know about it and finally got her to children's hospital there in Tex in houston and um she the doctors told her she wasn't going to live and and they stayed in there and prayed and my mother-in-law ruthie dearman was in there in the room with her and they began to pray and their and the pastor, doctor told her there's no way no she way. could take that medicine and live and live and they she said they can't just come check on her every now and then see if yeah, she's dead yet that's exactly what happened the doctors came in all through the night and just kept checking on her because they didn't expect her to live through the night but every time she'd be getting better and they couldn't figure out what's <laughs> going on and and christy said that brother osteen had been teaching the church and in this the is joel's daddy joel yeah, osteen's Joel's daddy john yeah, right and there, and back then, you know, Brother Osteen's been our pastor. Oh yeah. And and well, he's, I know, but when you say Brother Osteen today, I think everybody thinks of Joel. Think, they think, and Joel. they don't know there was yeah. a John. Yeah. <laughs> there wouldn't have been a Joel if there wasn't a John. Well, to those mm -hmm. of us that that were pastored and mentored under John Osteen's yeah, ministry, he he always would say, he says. Uh, he he would talk about his how high how tall he was and he'd say I'm five foot seven but I'm but I'm six feet tall on the inside that's right, you know that's right. and he would just always talk about the authority and the and the strength that he had by the Holy Ghost but Christy talks about how during that time Brother Osteen had been teaching the church that we walk by faith and not by sight and all through the night she said the hospital staff would come in and just be amazed that she kept getting gent little Jennifer kept getting better yeah. when they. They expected Thank her God. to die and by morning christy said there were so many doctors in the room you couldn't move and mother and i my mother-in-law ruthie dearman said that they began to testify to the doc doctors and witness to them that jesus is the same yesterday today and forever and Amen. brother she said brother osteen came in about 10 o'clock and was asking why we hadn't called him when this was going on the day before and she said we just left because he had also been teaching that you don't need the pastor to pray for everything pray your own prayers. but you can pray your own prayers you can use your own faith confess the word of god for yourself and she said i'm just grateful today that the word of god still works yeah and to have a pastor like that have a, that's the point to have a pastor yeah, to have like some that. little mealy mouth beta 
pastor instead yeah. of an alpha pastor. <laughs> alpha pastor. John may have only been five foot seven, but he oh, was. Oh my goodness! He was an alpha pastor, alpha exactly. man of God well, to like, run the devil off. That's exactly right. It's like Smith Wickers, Wicklesworth always said. You know, when he preached with that big booming voice, and he was a big man, but he would always say, "I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside," that's right. and that's where it really counts. Is that whatever your don't look at your circumstances or even don't consider your flesh like Abraham it says hey, Abraham didn't consider his body nor Sarah's right. but he was strong yeah, in faith right. believing and trusting God and that's where your real God had promised he was able to perform it exactly it do you good to go read Romans, Romans 4. 4 today and just build your faith up Hebrews 11 build your faith up but Terry and I were we we just talk about this all the time since we're in churches and then third world countries and we're seeing how you know the temperature of what's going on in the world and there and where did we you find that in Jeremiah chapter three Jeremiah three fifteen Jeremiah three fifteen and I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding and that's really what what we gotta have we gotta have oh, some knowledge. That's right. We gotta have some understanding. Well, we need some pastor. I always tell people, can can your pastor fight hell for you? That's it, right there. You know, can your pastor fight hell for your kids, for your wife, for your grandkids, for right, you? Right. You, you want a pastor that'll attack? I mean, attack hell with a water gun in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's exactly right. And then teach you how to do the same thing. No, exactly right. You know, it's Thank you've got to have a leader. Men of God and women of God. That's right. They will watch the flock of God and oversee them. God said That's right. God said those pastors have, have uh God requires them to oversee and watch over your souls. Your soul. And at the end, the pastor then is required by God to give him a report right. over what happened. Over what happened and how well you're doing. And Hebrews he said talks about it, yeah, that. Yeah, and he said it would be good for you that, that it's not a grievous report. It would be good for you if your pastor can give a, a, a good, good report, report, not a bad one. Yeah, and Paul always talked about, Terry, how he, he said, I've heard of your faith. Yeah, sure. I've heard of your faith oh, and absolutely. your love towards one another. So everything in the Word of God is a very powerful message that not only can your soul be saved and ripped out of the hands of the enemy to go live with God forever in eternity, but that God intends for you to have the supernatural power of God at work out of your own spirit and heart, and you have a sound mind, and you're able to hear from God from the inner man, and you have learned from your pastor that God gave you as a gift. Absolutely. You know, and, and I want to just and say this. Pastors that will have a heart for missions yes, and train yes. their people to, yeah. re, to win souls and to bring in missionaries like myself like <laughs> this, right. but to, to stir that vision up That's and light right. that fire and for them to get hooked up with us financially and prayerfully as partners right. I, we, we'll take the world oh my goodness you know there's so many levels of influence that you can have personally and then the pastor is trying to influence you and then you go out and influence other people but I want to say just one thing in defense of pastors here that you know pastors come in all shapes and sizes and personalities and we've colors we've been defending and, pastors the whole, the whole podcast the what? I said we've been defending pastors yeah. and bragging on them the whole podcast. Well, pastors are just so valuable. They're the grassroots of the gospel being preached in in any country of the world. And Terry and I have much to say on their defense and have have much respect for them. But I I, I want to say that like you know, pastors just are all ages. They're all personalities, all all sizes, all colors, everything. Male and female. Male and female. You know, and it don't judge the outward vessel by what. You, God is trying to do through that man or woman on your behalf. Amen. That that their heart is there. They say that 1500 people leave the ministry every day because of the persecution of their own flock. Yeah, that's bad. And we don't want that to happen. I, I'm i convinced that if you can teach a church to pray, they'll love more, they'll be faithful more, they'll work harder, they'll win souls, they'll Amen. give more. Uh, all of those things are in there. So I, Terry and I just wanted to show you these verses in Jeremiah 3, and then I want to point out to you uh, over there in um, Ephesians 1, we're going to have to go, but Ephesians 1, Paul prayed how you're supposed to learn how to pray. 
Ephesians chapter 3, the most fabulous prayer there that he prayed over all of us so that the power of God comes out of us by relationship with the Lord Jesus. And then in Ephesians 6, he tells you to be strong in the Lord, to stand and put on the whole armor of God so you can pray. That's exactly right. So <coughs> prayer... Prayer. You know, we pray for our partners every day, yes, every day, every day, every day. And it day. changes the situation. That God blesses our partners. He blesses them spirit, soul, body, family, finances, home, and ministry, and run the devil off. Bless their finances, bless their kids, bless their business, right. bless their health, bless their marriage, bless everything oh, they Jesus. put their hand to. Because we covenanted God. with God that if yes. people are going to partner with us, they're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless coming out in and bless going out. Absolutely. You know, just like the Word of God promises us. But, you know, just remember, there's one more scripture, Second Chronicles 17, is it 5 or 6, where it says that, that Jehoshaphat, it says his courage was high and his, what was it, his courage, he was... His heart was cheered and his courage was high in the ways of the Lord. And the day your pastor doesn't have a, a courageous heart <laughs> and he, he doesn't have big plans and there's no faith project, your church is in trouble. So I want to encourage you, um, you know, to just literally take on a spirit of prayer. If you've been lax in that and you have not given yourself to prayer like you should have or you've let the things of this world creep in and take your time i just want to i just want to encourage you to go back to your first love and love on god love on his people and let god do miracles for you and your family as you're about the master's work in prayer amen, amen. remember that second chronicles 17 6, uh, six. and his heart was was cheered and his courage was high and he went out there josphat did and just took down all the false gods and uh, and sacrificial places for them and and god israel set straight amen. <laughs> and amen. that's what we want god to do for you well our time is gone for today terry and i are delighted as well as honored to have been with you and talk to you about these good things from the word of god invite somebody to to listen to these great podcasts we're just excited about doing them for you because it's another way we can help you and you know sunday after next is easter sunday yeah. april the first easter right. sunday and, uh, of course, we think Easter is the most important holiday right. or holy day on the That's Christian's right. calendar because right. if it had not been for Easter, well, this thing would all be a bust, you know. A pastor friend of mine Jesus says it's, our, from the dead. it's the Christian Super Bowl. Oh, well, yeah. And then, and then two days after that, we go to uh, Bogota, Colombia, Bogota, in South Columbia. America. Yes, And we then do. after Bogota, we go to Medellin. And we're preaching in two great ministries down there. We're preaching at the Rama School down there. We're preaching at the Christ for the Nation School right, down there. Right. Plus, we're doing the Pastors Conference. Plus, we're preaching in church. Yes. And so we've got some tremendous ministry in Bogota and Medellin, South America. And we covet your prayers. That's right. And it'll be uh, warm down there. And I believe we're going to get out of this blizzard here in the nor'easter here in the East Coast. And we'll be... Uh, uh, in Tulsa for Easter, and then we'll be uh, in South America the just and, the same Easter week. And this weekend we're going to be. Uh, this weekend we'll be in uh, in Pastor James Lavelle's. La uh, excuse me, Pastor James Lavender. <laughs> uh, church here in uh, out close to Douglas Airport in Herndon, yes, Virginia. Herndon, Virginia. If you're in this area up here in the Washington D.C. area, please come join us Sunday morning and Sunday night. So come out and be with us and join us there with Pastor Lavender. Awesome. And we just want to encourage all of you that are here to just join us there. Well, anyway, our time's gone for today. We bless you in the name of Jesus. And we confess over every one of you that you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bless you. See you next week. You've been listening to a Mize Missions podcast. For all the latest updates to our global projects, speaking engagements, and social media, visit us at terrymize.com. You can partner with us to give living bread to dying men around the world. Get involved at terrymize.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of Terry Mize Ministries.